The following theorem will be will turn out to be very important and we'll use it frequently. So first statement is that A is invertible and that it implies, we may show that it implies that the, row re, uh, the reduced row echelon form of the matrix A equals the identity matrix. Well, we know that the reduced row echelon form of the combined matrices A together with the identity matrix equals the identity matrix together with the inverse matrix. So the row reduce and the, the reduced row echelon form of A, which we get by the same operations, the same gauss jordan elimination steps, is also equal to the identity matrix over here. Well, 2 and 3 are, uh, in fact, direct equ equivalent. Why? Well, from 2 follows 3. A has n pivots, so the rank is n. And the rank is, since the rank is defined as the number of, of pivot elements after uh, after performing gauss jordan elimination steps. If we have three, if we have a rank, a matrix of full rank, then the system AX is Y has a unique solution for all Y. Well, why is that? Well, we have N equations, N variables, and we have N pivots. So we can express after performing uh, the necessary Gauss-Jordan elimination steps on uh, on the augment augmented matrix with Y, we can read the solution from these pivots. So we have a unique solution. Well, from four, we have an immediate consequence that five is true. Yeah, you know, it's immediate because the zero vector is a special y vector. So the system ax is 0 has a unique solution, x is 0. The converse holds as well, so assume that we have ax is 0 has a unique solution, x is 0, but that 4 does not hold for true. So we have two solutions for the same equation ax is y, x1 and x2. And uh, we suppose that they are unequal, so we have two true solutions, different solutions. Then if we look at A times the difference of these vectors, A times x1 minus x2, well this equals Ax1 minus Ax2, and this is y and that is y, so we get y minus y equals the zero factor. So now we found a vector x1 minus x2, unequal to the zero vector, which solves Ax is zero, contradictory to what it says in 5. So 4 and 5 are equivalent. Now equivalence of all statements is, is shown by performing, uh, by proving that 1 follows from 4. Well, in 4 we actually have that we can find, given a y, we can find x back. So actually, if we look at the linear transformation tx is a times x, this is an invertible uh, uh, transformation by definition. And we've seen that the inverse transformation uh, also is a linear transformation with a certain matrix for which it holds that ab is ba equals identity matrix. And this is no more than stating that A is invertible. So again, we started with 1. From 1 follows 2, from 2 follows 3, from 3 follows 4. 4 and 5 are equivalent, and from 4 we get back at 1. So we get a circular reasoning showing that all of these statements are equivalent.